hey everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to continue with our project which is chat gpt plus drone so in the previous video what we did was we looked at the overview we discussed what exactly can we do and what i've done is i've also created a playlist for this series so you can check that out in the link in the description below so the idea here is that we will split it up into four different parts and then each part we are going to do separately and understand uh, each of the sections. Uh, the, bigger, the bigger picture here is to do small things and have a bigger impact at the end. So that's why I have split it down into smaller pieces so it's easier to follow along. Now the funny thing will be that we will be using AI to actually write the code for our AI program. So that will be uh, a lot of fun to see how exactly does that work out because now we are headed into uh, we are headed into this era of programming where AI will help you out to write your program. So why write it um, without the help of AI? So that is what we are going to look at. So the first thing uh, today what we are going to do is speech to text. Now we, we are going to convert whatever we speak, we are going to convert it into text. And then in the next part, we will uh, send whatever we get from our speech. We will send it to our API and we will get the response from that. Then we will look into what exactly should we prompt. So prompt engineering is a very important field nowadays and you have to make sure that you are sending in the correct thing before you actually get the response. And then in the last part is the most important and the most fun part where we will actually use uh, our uh, prompts to get the response and then send the actions. So basically you are putting chat GPT or AI model in the driving seat. So that is what we are going to do. So what we'll be do doing for today, we will create a new project. So here we have a new Python project. Uh, you can do this in PyCharm, you can do this in Vue Studio, whichever software you prefer. So let's call it AI Assistant. So we are going to create our project and we will bring it in. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to use AI to actually do this. So what I will do is I will open up ChatGPT. Now, if you are not using ChatGPT, you are using Gemini or you are using any other model, you can go ahead and do so as well. So what I will be using is ChatGPT4 because it, could, it gives good responses but uh, the task in hand that we have is very simple so you could even do it with chat gpt 3.5 and it should work out fine so with more complicated stuff it might be a little bit difficult but for this instance i think it should work fine so i'm trying to log in at the moment and it's taking a while to log in Okay, so here we have our chat GPT-4. So what we will do is we will ask, uh, we will try to uh, give it the scenario that we want to convert our speech to text and it will be like a conversation. So we should uh, say something and then it will wait for uh, the response and then it will give us the output. So uh, it, not the response, the processing. It will wait for the processing to be completed and then it will output the response. And meanwhile, we want to print things out so that uh, we don't get impatient, right? So uh, what exactly do we write? I can see that in the camera, it's not actually showing on the screen. So I believe now you can see. Okay. So um, I am writing a Python program that will convert speech to text. Uh, or not I am writing, write a program. Write, write a Python program that will convert speech to text use functional 
programming. Now, the reason we are saying use functional programming is because uh, we want to separate each different function. So good code actually works with different principles. For example, you have classes, you have functions. So what we are doing is we are taking the functionality part, we are giving in an input and we are getting an output. So now what we can do is we can write everything in one place or we can separately write functions and then we send the command to that function, it gives us the output and then we send the command to the other function and it gives us an output. So this way it's a little bit easier to follow along and if there are any problems, we can find out and fine tune those problems. Now, if you don't do that, your code will still work, but it will be harder to maintain. So that's the basic idea behind using functional programming. So write a Python program that will convert speech to text use functional programming and uh, in the start ask the user to say something and then print the response yeah i think that's pretty good so far so let's hit enter and see what do we get so it is saying to create a simple Python program that converts speech to text using functional programming principles, we will use speech recognition library. This library provides a straightforward way to interface with various speech to text engines, including Google's. So uh, hopefully this will give us some good results. Here's how you can install the required library. Now you can pip install or you can go to settings and install. Uh, what we will do is we will use pip install, we will go to terminal, make sure that you are in the virtual environment and you just paste it and it will start collecting and installing. So it has done. Now, now I will provide a Python script that encapsulates functionality in functions, adheres to immutability where practical and avoids side effects as much as possible in a typical use case like this. Okay, so what is it giving us? Let's expand this. Okay, so we have this function. So here it is giving us the function recognize speech from microphone, which is good. And then here it's giving us the main function. And then we have uh, the main module function. So what you can do is whenever you want to run the script by itself, then you can add this so that whenever you run the script by itself, it will run this part, which will run this, which is going to run this. Now it's looping, but that's good because it will be easier for us to debug and uh, look where exactly the problem is, if there is any problem. So how it works, recognize speech from microphone. The function takes a recognizer and a microphone as input, captures the audio, captures the audio and attempts to convert it into text using Google speech recognition API. It returns the recognized text or the error message. So at the back end, it's using the Google API. Set up a recognizer microphone prompts user and this and this. So the program handles basic errors like API unavailability and unintangible speech. Okay. For actual functional programming in a strict hands uh, by the notation, but this script follows uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I think that's a lot of talk and very less doing. So let's go ahead and do something, right? So let's right click, create a new Python file. We will call it main. And here we are simply going to paste our code. So that's exactly what ChatGPT has written. And that's exactly what we have pasted it here. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So that will be interesting to see that if there is any issue or not. Okay, so yes, we do have some issue. We have the issue that import oh, by audio, no module name by audio. Handle of above exception. So we need to install by audio. Uh, that is what I can see. So we will go to terminal and we will write here pip install by audio. So hopefully that will resolve our issue. So let's go ahead and run that. Now, Python, uh, not Python, ChatGPT should have told us that you do have to install by audio, but it didn't. 
Ah, it's okay. So it is waiting for us to say something, but I did say something. Okay, so it took a while to give us the response. So here it says Python, not Python for GPT should have told us that you have to install by audio, but I didn't, that's okay. Okay, so that's not very good, but uh, you get the uh, basic idea. So let's try it out again. Now the thing is, what we want is that we want some sort of feedback as well. So what we want to do is we want to write here that uh, prints and let the user know when to speak and then when the uh, speech is being converted. So we want to add that part where it prints out that Currently, it is processing, so hold on and we will give you a response. So, by the way, we didn't actually look at the code even. <laughs> we should have recognized speech from microphone. We have a recognizer, we have a microphone. It will detect the microphone, uh, whichever one is default. It will grab the audio from it and then it will send it to the recognizer, which will recognize uh, sorry it will send it to the google recognize which will recognize the audio and see what exactly do we get as the response so it's very basic stuff nothing fancy and here in the main function uh, you can see you can use it like this recognize speech from microphone you can give in these two things and then at the end of the day it will provide you with the actual text and it will print out you said this now it has changed the code so let's see here first of all it was saying adjusting for ambient noise then please speak now then it is saying processing speech please wait and yeah then it will print this so that's um that's you can say it's in stepwise it is giving us the details of what exactly is happening so it will be easier for the user to see and interact what is the weather today so as you can see what is the weather today so that's good so this way you know that something is being processed you know that uh, when to speak and when to wait so because people can get very impatient nowadays so we have to give that part where it actually waits uh, one more thing we can do uh, we can add a functionality of sound so instead of just having uh, the printout we can have sound so if you have used uh, some applications that actually get your speech and do some processing then they do have a beep or something that helps you uh, create that uh, illusion that you are being heard <laughs> so that's what we are uh, that's what we will be trying to do so how can we do that so we can say here so there are multiple libraries that you can use to detect audio or not to detect to play audio the one we will be using is pygame because it's uh, widely used there's a lot of resources around it and it tends to give less errors than the others so uh, we can say using pygame using pygame include include what should we include? Include sounds for when the user should start speaking and, oh, it's not visible. Let me push that there. Speaking and when uh, the processing starts. So let's see what happens there and while we look into that what I will do is I will copy the sounds of start and end uh, you can find them online if you have your own sound you can make your own sound and then that will be fun as well so right now it's writing the code and these are the two files end.wave and start.wave so here it's saying that it has already done it so let's see 
we are importing pi game we are initializing pi game and then we are playing the sound and we are playing where are we playing we are playing it here processing and are we playing it before that are we playing it before that doesn't seem so oh no there are two yeah we are playing it here and then we are playing it here so yeah that makes sense so let's copy that and we are going to replace everything did we change something uh no didn't change anything and then what we can do is we can install pygame so pip install pygame and that will install it and while it's installing what we can do is we can change here start speaking this is start.wave and end.wave so let me check if this is on the desktop audio is not on so let me reduce the sound a little bit so you can hear as well okay so let's go ahead and play that so it didn't actually wait a long time you should have said something who are you who are you Who are you? Who are you? So two times. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, it, it indicates with the beep and then it has this swoosh sound at the end. Let's try that again. What is your name? What is your name? Yeah, it gets it twice. So sometimes I get a little bit impatient and I say before the beep, but it still gets it so but the beep is a good reference point to start and then when it sends the audio uh, not the audio the text then it will give us that swish sound so that's pretty much it so we are up to a good start we have used ai to create an ai platform <laughs> so uh, what we are doing is we are getting our audio we are getting the speech and then we are converting it into text and that was our first part, speech to text. And in the second part, what we will do is we will use ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever inference we want to use. We will use that AI inference and we will send our text to that. Later on, we are going to make sure that we have the optimized prompt which we are sending. And the last part will be the actions where we will have our actions running. Now, don't forget, we have our Kickstarter campaign. Let me show you the Kickstarter campaign that is running right now. Uh, it will end in just three days. So if you are interested in drone programming, then this is the way to go. Uh, you can see here we have a lot of different projects, a lot of fun projects. And uh, here you can see, there you go. We have traffic surveillance, obstacle course, and fire and rescue drone show so we'll be learning how to simultaneously program drones to work together so and then there's a lot of bundles that you can select from so it is easier for you to select and get the optimum one based on your requirements so that is pretty much it for today I hope you have learned something new and I hope you will continue watching this series uh, in which we are going to create a drone assistant where we speak to the drone and it does some action using AI. So it's a lot of fun and hopefully I am going to see you in the next one.